Hi, Chris. Uh, welcome to Better Tech. How are you doing today? Hi. Doing very well. How are you? I'm doing great. So, Chris, uh, before we begin, why don't you uh, start off by giving an introduction of uh, what you do and uh, your role in your current company? Okay. Um, yes, I'm the uh, IT Operations Director for the Americas at uh, Veeam Software Corporation. Um, so, Veeam, if you don't know, um, we're uh, backup and restore and disaster recovery solution software company. Um, we have a great product. Um, we you know, love the fact that we're doing well taking care of people's data. Um, my role in the company is uh, I basically run um, IT operations from this half of the world. Um, so we're a global company. We got people all over the, the, the world. Um, so my teams are are the people who handle mostly um, internal stuff, um, help desk type stuff, uh, but we also end up doing you know a lot of kind of integration with other business leaders, trying to make sure that you know everything's taken care of and that the things that they want, um, we've helped them get those things um, or steer them in a direction that makes better sense. Because you know how it is, somebody's like, hey, I want this thing, and it's like, well, we we have this thing that works better than what you're asking for. Oh, okay, cool. So a lot of it is just kind of making sure everybody's getting what they want and that, you know, we're able to help business leaders succeed at, you know, doing business. <laughs> right. So uh, interesting that you mentioned the, the, the term business leader. So uh, a lot of people ask us, what is the difference between, you, you know, general uh, <clears throat> decision makers or leaders in a company and specifically tech leaders? So how would you differentiate those two? That's a tough question. Um, I mean, Historically, so I've been with I, I've been doing some version of technology since the mid 90s. Um, technology used to be very um, narrowly focused. Uh, you use technology to solve a simple problem or a specific problem. Um, so IT people were kind of kept far away from normal business things. You know, business is business, technology is technology. Um, but as we've grown, you know, as a society, uh, technology has become a pillar of what makes everybody's life work. Um, I mean, from jokes about kids that, with their faces and iPods since they're, you know, born, um, you know, like it's, the, it, technology is just how we live. So when you start talking about business leaders in an organization, you know, you know your heads of, you know, the finance department or the you know, sales department or the marketing department or the R&D department or all these other things, whatever your business is trying to do, you're going to need technology to succeed. You're going to need that, you know, to get a hold of people. You're going to need to, to keep organized. You're going to need to be able to, you know, just utilize all of the information you have before you. So technology has become more and more mainstream as a business idea. Um, there's still a lot of craziness with, you know, who does the head of IT and a company work for? Do they report to the CEO? Do they report to the CFO? Do they report to the COO? Uh, I, I've seen all three of those things in my career. Um, you know, and it's and those are those are fundamental discussions about where IT fits in an organization. So a business leader would be thinking about, okay, well, if I'm the head of finance, I need to make sure that the numbers are in order. If I'm the head of sales, I need to make sure my people are selling. If you know, but when technology comes in we're just here to make sure that all those other people are able to do their jobs and do their jobs without restriction. Um, you know, our job is to, to kind of allow them to do what they do better. Right. And that's a perfect segue into our next question. Uh, uh, <laughs> so uh, last year was a very unusual, let's say unusual year for all of us. So how do you think sure. that the pandemic and all the situation that uh, that arose because of that pandemic affected the mindsets of uh, certain leaders of the industry? Tremendously. Um, I mean, being involved in technology, it's been amazing to see the, the 
people coming out saying, oh, this is, you know, you, how did you guys do this? You know, you, we, our entire team is working from home and, you know, you set this up and everything's just seamless. And, you know, so that everybody's really excited about, you know, I mean, technology grows and grows and grows and grows, but implementation of technology is pretty, pretty slow. Um, but 2020 kind of said, okay, here's all this stuff that we can do. Let's do this stuff. Um, and then a lot of people were surprised that it worked. Um, and finally, I was, we, you know, in the tech industry, we were starting to see praise for what we've been doing the whole time is, you know, hey, you have a business need and technology can support that business need. So whether it be, you know, a TV in the conference room and setting that all up for, for conferences or, hey, here's laptops and, you know, cameras and microphones so you can work from home, you know, setting up VPN stuff and expanding VPN, making sure everybody's got internet connectivity, like all those things are things that we've been doing the whole time. But until people needed it, there were nobody cared. But now 2020 was a big year for technology because they started realizing that they needed us to, to do business. So it's been really cool to see, you know, it's the same thing we, we're seeing in other aspects, you know, oh, hey, like the, the person who delivers my mail, the, this is what, a, what an amazingly important position this is in our lives. And, you know, the people who collect our garbage, the, the people who work in fast food, you know, there's a lot of where, where people are starting to take people in positions that they've taken for granted and started looking at them, wait, we really need these things. Like they may not be glamorous. They may not be the things that everybody's, you know, you know, everybody wants to be the CEO. Nobody wants to be a, you know, help desk tech, but those help desk techs are the reasons the CEOs can, you know, continue to do business. If their laptop stopped working, like you're kind of floating out in the middle of nowhere. So that, that was a really interesting thing about 2020 seeing people get the recognition, recognition that they've been, doing great work all along. That's true. All right, so on a personal level, uh, I understand that uh, 2020 specifically has been, has brought a lot of tragedies to our lives and there are a lot of things that we'd like to raise from memory. But mm -hmm. what are some of the positive aspects that you've taken and you've incorporated in your, in your life? I mean, the first one is working from home. Uh, I mean, it's, it's great to get up and, you know, make a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and, um, you know, just kind of roll out of bed and, you know, wake up a little bit more naturally and normally instead of rushing and, you know, showering and, you know, hurrying and going crazy to try to drive through traffic to get to work. Um, so for me, working from home has been great. Plus my job, because of the international aspect, it's, my job isn't like, oh, I show up to work at eight and then my work day starts and then I leave at five and my work day ends, you know, and I get some time in the middle for lunch. It's, you know, usually I got a bunch of stuff coming from overseas. So I come in the morning, I got a lot of stuff I got to take care of. And then I get a lot of stuff in the afternoon. And then the middle of the day is a little bit more flexible. Um, so for me, it's, you know, having that flexibility of like, okay, cool. Well, I'll, you know, if I, I can check my email in my bed for half an hour while I'm, you know, just kind of waking up and then, you know, go on, start my computer get things ready. And then, you know, the middle of the day, hey, maybe I take lunch at 1030 because I know I've got a couple of calls at noon. Maybe I take a lunch at two o'clock. Maybe, you know, hey, I need to go run to the store and get something really quick. Like, it's been so amazing to to be able to say, hey, I can... I'm an adult and I can adjust my schedule as needed. And, you know, Hey, if I need to take a call at five o'clock or six o'clock or seven o'clock at night, I can do that. I can, I can adjust my schedule a little bit. So I, I've really enjoyed that. Um, and as a tech person, I've enjoyed seeing people embracing technology, um, you know, things that nobody was even thinking about two years ago is now normal life for everybody. So, I mean, it is a tragedy. I've lost um, friends and family to, to COVID and, um, you know, there's, there's been a lot of, of negative, a whole lot of negative, but, um, you know, if you try to look a little bit to some of the positives, I think there's been a lot of, of great strides and, and, and business operations and things like that. And, and because of it. Absolutely true. All right. So uh, let's, Let's move on to our next question, which is sure. that there's a, a very famous statement that modern, uh, modern problems require modern solutions. How much do you agree with that or disagree with that? To that um, 
I, I would say, I would say strongly agree. Um, I mean, sometimes tried and true works, you know, um, treating people like people, you know, that's should be, a, I mean, that's an old tradition and an, an old method methodology, um, but still works. But when you start talking about, you know, hey, I need to have this call and I'm running late to this meeting. Oh, I'll just pick up your phone and call, you know, and now it's, hey, I, I'm late to this meeting. Well, you know, get on a Zoom call or Teams or, you know, WebEx or whatever your, your, your app of choice is. Um, you know, like, I think modern technology has solved so many modern problems. Um, you know, just the ability, you can talk to somebody all the way around the world without going to them. Um, you know, it's, it's great to see how, you know, simple technologies that have been around for a long time are able to, you know, even stuff. So you talk about help desk, you know, if there's a problem with your laptop, you've got to go talk to somebody and bring your, because 15 years ago, that was what you did. You had a problem, you called somebody and they came over to your desk and fixed your desktop. But you know, now you've got, you know, log me in and team viewer and all these other things where you have a remote desktop where so, hey, I'm having this problem. You know, I can be on a yacht in the Pacific and jump on somebody, you know, his laptop sitting in New York City and be like, cool, let's go and, and take care of this problem. Uh, I mean, these, the, so the modern solutions have become um, just normal now which is amazing it's it's great to see how people are starting to look at things differently and they're they're not always saying hey well this is the way we've always done it so this is the way we're going to continue to do it and and i love that yeah that's that's absolutely true and uh, on that note well, what is the one <laughs> tech trend that uh, you're particularly excited about going into the future um as as normal as it's going to sound is AI, you know, I'm sure that's what everybody's kind of focused on. Um, but AI is, is such a large uh, concept, you know, when you start talking about even the difference between, you know, when you get on a website and there's a little chat box that says, hey, ask us a question. I mean, that's AI, you know, when you talk about, you know, smart cars and how like they're I guess not smart car, but, you know, technology and cars that are allowing, you know, the space between your car and the car in front of you for, you know, the adjustable cruise control, like that's AI, you know, when, you know, so to see how we're allowing computers to learn our patterns so that they can help protect us from ourselves. Um, I think that's great. I, you know, the other side of that is, you know, different companies that are going to use the data that they collect to, you know, hurt or punish or, you know, monetize our decisions. Um, you know, just stuff. I, I was, I was at a, a conference a while ago, a couple of years ago, and they were, somebody was talking about how they're using um, like voice recordings and they're seeing, okay, well, like if you, you call in and, and you're talking to customer service, they'll start saying, okay, if you, if this person is yelling, then they might have, a greater chance of, you know, heart problems in the future. So like the insurance companies are looking at these things and be like, we're going to raise this person's insurance rates because they were yelling at a customer service, you know, representative because the company was trying to steal money from this person. So you get all this weird stuff where, you know, people are trying to monetize, um, you know, people's decisions. And sometimes it's just an anomaly, but, um, you know, with big data and AI, I think you're going to get a whole lot of, of really interesting technology is coming out and then how do we utilize you know all of this information that's just like stockpiling everywhere <laughs> yeah that's true so one of the things that i often talk about with uh, my team is that uh, as long as you're comfortable and you have faith in the googles and the apples and the samsung of uh, this day and age mm -hmm. uh, you're good but the, the right. day you start losing faith in them or on the on the flip side, that they they start betraying your faith. That's uh, right. it all go, goes downhill. So how how long do you think right. well, uh, I mean, yeah. a matrix like situation <laughs> is far uh, is away from us? <laughs> um, that's I mean sure I, I mean that's always the 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 end all be all of AI issues. Um, you know that or or smartnet or um, not smartnet. Uh, what do you 
Skynet. Why didn't I smart it? Anyway, yeah. so yeah, you, when you look at, you know, when the, when the computers come after us. Um, so when you start looking at uh, technology and, and you even look at, at the, the three rules for robots and, and um, you know, things where, how do we, of course, you're always going to have horror movies and scenarios that are set up based on, you know, this thing that we think is on our side is really not on our side. You know, you get that from Cujo or Carrie, like, you know, um, you know, people who are, you know, oh, this is just a normal whatever. And oh, no, wait, now they're against us. Um, so, you know, technology is the similar thing where you have, you know, there's so many movies where, you know, some version of technology is attacking us. I, I, Maybe I'm being, you know, too innocent and whatever, but I don't see that as being the problem. I see the problem is how are, how are human beings who are known for taking advantage of other human beings going to use technology to take advantage of more human beings more efficiently? Um, you know, I'm not worried about Skynet. I'm not worried about, you know, Judgment Day. You know, I'm worried about, you know, you look at even, I mean, without trying to get too political, but you look at like Facebook and how, Facebook has managed to to segment society into small groups, you know, and those groups don't now you, you've built walls up. So now these people, the people in this group think the people in this group are evil and the people in this group think the people of this group are evil. Neither one of them are now talking to each other. So you've had this one social media platform that has caused a massive rift in humanity. Um, both sides see that problem, but think it's the other side's problem, which is the, you know, so for me, I'm not, I'm not worried about Facebook as a, its own app trying to, to take over. I'm worried about when people say, hey, I can become a billionaire by exploiting people's weaknesses. That's, that's my matrix is, you know, you're going to, you're going to take a step back and the architect of the matrix is really just a guy who's like, I've just enslaved the entire world and now I'm the richest man alive. So that's my, my concern isn't that technology is going to take over. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that's an interesting point that, uh, so I'm in the marketing team, right? So the first day <laughs> I joined the marketing team here at Excel, my boss told me that there is, Rashan, there is no such thing as ethical marketing. <laughs> right. That was quite surprising to me. But <laughs> now I understand that even basics of marketing revolve around manipulating people to buy your product that they're uh, they weren't going to buy otherwise. Sure. So, yeah. Sure. And I mean, it's sad when you start thinking about it. every conversation you have is an attempt to get somebody to agree with you on something. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, we're trying to sell software services, but someone might have more, uh, you know, evil uh, right. <laughs> ambition and they can right. use this technology to achieve much worse things. Sure. Yeah, that's a good point. So uh, <laughs> we've talked about something that you're excited about. What is one of the future trends that you're more uh, on the skeptical side of things? Um, our, so I love how we're relying on technology to solve our problems, but I think a lot of the problem we are going to face in the future is relying on technology to solve our problems. Um, you know, talking to, to, you know, family members, I have, you know, young nieces and nephews and stuff like that, who are going through school. Um, you know, and I remember when I was a kid, uh, you know, the teach math teachers would say, you can't use a calculator because you're not going to have a calculator with you everywhere you go. Yeah. <laughs> like I have a calculator with me everywhere I go. Um, but because of that, I can do simple addition and subtraction in my head. You know, I can, you know, if I want $5 back instead of $4 and some change and I give some, like I've done this before where, you know, the cashier looks at me like I, you know, I just stripped naked in front of them. Um, you know, and it's like, no, I, I want, this is what I want back as change for a specific purpose, you know, and, and some of those, those skills that, people learn when they don't rely on technology are skills that people don't have when they rely on technology. I remember my best friend's phone number from 35 years ago. I really have to think about what my wife's phone number is because it's in my phone. I don't ever have to dial it. You know, I dialed my best friend every day, you know, so like I remember his phone number. He hasn't had that phone number in 25 years. Um, you know, I don't know what his current phone number is because it's in my phone. 
Um, so when you start looking at that, I mean, those are silly examples, but, but the uh, more we start relying. But wouldn't you agree that sure. uh, technology also helps us free our mind from such uh, things and uh, makes more space in our mind for more important things? For example, there's, sure. uh, I mean, uh, a lot of research shows that there's only a limited amount of space in our mind, just like our computer. So mm -hmm. if you're using some of that space to store phone numbers, for example, uh, right. you might as well use that for something more important. So do you sure, agree? sure. No, I, no, absolutely. I, I was using it as a silly example, but one that's relatable to anybody. Um, but I mean, when there's stuff, when you start looking at, um, you know, just solving problems and you say, okay, well, I've done this before and I can solve this problem. So, you know, if, if somebody comes up and they say, hey, my computer's not playing sound or whatever, and I can go in and I can say, well, based on the handful of things that I've done before, I can go in and I can do this. Or you say, I don't, you know, I know I've seen this before, but I don't remember, let me Google it. Um, so then you start getting into using technology as a way to circumvent you know, the human brain from right. thinking. Um, so when you start using technology as a way to stop yourself from reasoning things out, thinking things out, we get the Facebook thing again, where, you know, I'm sure this person isn't evil and I'm sure this person isn't evil, but they both think they are because they're relying on technology to tell them so instead of just having a conversation. You know, and I think for me, that's the scary part of technology is when we start relying on technology to be, um, you know, perfect. And we start relying on technology to take the place of our own due diligence and our own thought processes. That's, that's what scares me about the embrace, the, the full on embrace of technology is, um, you know, we're, we're doing it to ourselves using technology. All right. The next question is a bit <laughs> ironic since we're sure. doing build machines. And, uh, <laughs> the question is, asking about what we can learn from them but i guess that's a fair question no no it's i mean we can learn a lot from machines um you know inherently machines are you know quote unquote perfect you know you you give them a task they complete that task you know you can watch machines do the same thing over and over. Uh, so we can learn a lot about um you know how to you know model our behaviors that make sense because we can throw a machine through a, a, a series of things and see how that output happens and say, okay, well, if we just here, we just here, we just here. I mean, machines teach us all kinds of things. I was looking, uh, Reddit had a thing today. There was a, a picture of um, the top 200 shots in the NBA versus in 2001, 2002 season versus like last season and how everything was spread out 20 years ago and then everything is you know in, in a, a few like spots mm -hmm. and you know when you start using um you know machines to help us to figure out what's the most efficient way to do that so they stopped people stopped taking two-point shots because you can take a, a step back and make a three-point shot that's 50 percent growth why would you not take that shot you know so you know when you start looking at how that data is is compiled and analyzed i mean that's technology you know that's using technology to solve a problem like hey we can we'll score more points if you take a step back you know and so it's it's i mean we we're learning things from machines all the time which is amazing but it's not relying on the machines to tell us what to do. It's using the machines to show us where our, our yeah. the, the holes in our reasoning are. I mean, I using machines for learning is amazing. I mean, that's it's it's great. I mean, just analytics alone, you know, is you, uh, so great. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So uh, our last question: How sure. how do you think companies should train uh, future leaders? to benefit society or human society going forward? Um, honestly, is, is to talk about the humanity. Um, you know, I, I've worked with people and worked for people before who look at the technology as the end game. So, um, you know, I used to work as a uh, uh, help desk person years ago. And, you know, we were talking about, you know, what we do. And I said, you know, it's customer service, you know, we're here, here to help the customer. And it was like, no, we're here to fix the machines. And I said, well, we help the customer by fixing the machines. Our job isn't to fix the machines because sometimes you replace the machines. So fixing the machines isn't the problem. It's 
making sure that these people can do their jobs. We're, we are taking care of people using machines to do that. Um, and I think as, as I've watched my career progress and, and, and working with and dealing with more people, I think more people are starting to be on that side, but you know, still making sure that new people coming into this understand that technology isn't about the technology. Technology is about empowering lives and technology is about create, uh, crossing gaps. And, and, you know, you can have a conversation with the richest person in the world and the poorest person in the world if you just put each one of them in front of a laptop. Like, how great is that? Um, you know, you can, you know, people who are solving problems, you know, you have high school kids all around the world that are telling a grown adults you know, hey, you missed this thing and this thing is huge and you should look into that. And like, you have teenagers helping to change the world because of technology. You've got, I mean, just, it's amazing to see, you know, how that's working, but you have to come from that understanding that technology isn't the point. You know, empowering people, bettering our society, bettering our world, using the technology is the point. So as new people come in, training them up to realize that you're not here to fix a computer or build a server or, you know, create a, a network. You're here to allow others to do what they're supposed to do. You're here to, to build this thing and be a part of this group that's, that's doing something awesome. And, you know, showing people that I think is a great way to, you know, also uh, allow others to get into the system. You know, when we talk about, you know, especially, you know, women in STEM and things like that, you know, showing that uh, this isn't just about playing with toys, this is about bettering society. And then, you you know, you start getting people who maybe, oh, I wasn't really thinking about computers, but if I can use computers to help people. So for me, that's that's always my thing is how can we use technology to help people? That's, that's the end game here. <laughs> Perfect. That, so that's a perfect note to end our podcast on that awesome. we, should, we should always try to use technology to better human society. Uh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Cool. So, well, I, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much for taking out the time. And, thank you. Uh, we, hope, we hope we can do this again sometime. Hey, just let me know. Thanks. Perfect.